Okay, the next example of uh, microbial impacts on our energy resources that we want to discuss is uh, heavy oil. This quote from Head et al. kind of sums up a lot of what we want to talk about here. Biodegraded oils dominate the world's petroleum inventory, with the largest reserves being found not in the Middle East, but on the flanks of Fortland basins in the Americas. So basically, uh, what I'm going to talk about here is what are these biodegraded oils? Okay, what are, what, are, what are these four land basins? What's the geological setting that has led to accumulation of these large oil reservoirs? Okay, what happens during biodegradation? That's the first question we're going to take on. Um, well, basically, light oil generated during or cooking of organic matter is converted into heavy oil. Uh, this change is associated with some compositional changes it seems that uh, there are some uh, components in petroleum that are more easily or more rapidly degraded by microbes and this results in a, uh, a decrease in the abundance of saturated hydrocarbons and to a lesser extent a decrease in the abundance of aromatic hydrocarbons in petroleum. These changes in composition are associated with some changes in the properties of that petroleum Specifically, um, uh, there's an increase in density, an increase in viscosity, becomes less able to flow, <clears throat> and then also a decrease in the ability of oil to dissolve gas. Okay. How widespread are these, uh, uh, is biodegradation? Well, it seems that more than 50% of Earth's oil occurs as biodegraded oils and tar, tar sand accumulations. The largest known petroleum accumulation in the world is the Orinoco Heavy Oil Belt in Venezuela, which contains about 1,200 billion barrels of oil. Uh, the second largest is the Athabasca Oil Sands in Western Canada, which is shown on this slide and contains about 900 billion barrels. Okay, combined with uh, the Peace River and the Cold Lake, um, together these three oil, uh, these three reservoirs contain more than 1,700 billion barrels of severely biodegraded heavy oils. Okay, to put these numbers in perspective, the largest oil reserves uh, reservoirs in the Middle East contain less than 200 billion barrels. So these are enormous accumulations of oil and it happens to be um, biodegraded oil. Uh, why have these large accumulations formed here and uh, what is a foreland basin? Uh, why is this good for accumulation of biodegraded oil? Uh, well, this is uh, in my mind a really cool example of geology and microbiology coming together and having a, an impact on uh, human resources in, in, a, in an important way. So let's uh, go to the drawing pad and try to illustrate uh, this geologic setting a little bit better. So the first thing we want to ask uh, is, uh, what is a foreland basin? Oops. What is a foreland basin? Okay, and basically it's just a basin along the edge of a mountain range. Okay, so that's how we're going to think about it. Basin along, let's say, the margin. of a mountain range. Okay, so let me try to illustrate this for you a little bit. We know that uh, mountains are places where you have thick lithosphere, right? Mountains go up, uh, but they also have to have deep roots to support all of that uh, mass, right? And uh, so as they go up, they also kind of sink down a little bit into the asthenosphere and that downward sinking creates uh, a, basically a bend in the, in the adjacent lithosphere, right? And that bend right there is a foreland basin right there. Foreland basin. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to wipe this clean and I'm going to uh, just kind of zoom in on this foreland basin and talk a little bit more about it. So I'm going to wipe it clean now. There we go. So 
Uh, there's some uh, thrust faults over here associated with the mountain. Let's do something like that. Okay, and over here we have um, our four land basin. So it looks something like this. Okay, and we've accumulated some sediment in that foreland basin as uh, as the surrounding highlands have been weathered and uh, sediment has been transported into this basin, and has the as the basin has uh, kind of opened up over time. So I'm just going to draw in some some beds here. Let's go ahead and give them all. There we go. A little structure. Okay. So there we have a foreland basin that's kind of filled up with sediment. And let's imagine that some of that sediment um, is uh, rich in organic matter. So uh, we'll draw in a, a bed of organic matter, uh, rich sediments here. Okay, there we go. Now, um, as you go down below the surface, uh, uh, temperature increases right in response to Earth's thermal gradient and let's assume that down here it happens to be oops let me switch to a pen here down here it happens to be warm enough that the organic matter in that uh, organic matter rich layer was cooked and uh, was able to generate oil okay so this is basically uh, an oil kitchen And you can imagine, uh, if this is a relatively long mountain range, that this oil kitchen could extend laterally for quite a ways uh, along the edge of this mountain. Okay, and so you could generate a lot of oil there. Um, now, as a result of uh, hydrodynamic forces, buoyancy, uh, capillary forces, that oil is going to make its way up dip over time, migrating along the basin. Uh, up towards the margin of the basin. Let's assume that it does that and then uh, ends up getting trapped uh, getting uh, trapped in the basin and forms an accumulation uh, right up here because of some structural elements that come together and trap it along the margin of the basin. Well now up here uh, in this environment right, we have uh, significantly uh, lower temperature and down there where the oil is being generated, lower temperature. Uh, it's also uh, common to have um, more fresh water uh, up towards the margin of the basin, lower salinity, okay, because the uh, circulation of uh, fresh water near the surface uh, would help dilute any salinity that's present. Uh, the water would have uh, possibly have a, a lower residence time, um, <clears throat> so it would be less water rock interaction that would occur, less probability that that water would have account encountered um, some evaporite mineral uh, deposits that could be present within the basin. Okay, in any case, both of these things uh, are, are good for microbial activity, right? They could, uh, microbes can thrive in environments that have relatively low temperature um, and low salinity and then a bunch of organic matter that could serve as a source of food. Now, because that uh, uh, oil is kind of trapped there um, and more oil is coming in, over time uh, you can end up accumulating more and more oil there, right? As more oil is coming out of that source kitchen and migrating upward and then being degraded here and forming this uh, low viscosity um, tar that's clogging up this area. Uh, over time, you can accumulate a large amount of petroleum. Okay, and that's exactly what's happened in these large foreland basins. It seems that a lot of this um, degradation has been occurring uh, and as the result of growth of anaerobic microorganisms uh, with methane as a, a major byproduct. Um, and uh, because this has occurred over a long period of time and uh, the conditions were just right for it, there's a rather large deposit that's formed. Okay, and so that um, kind of summarizes some of the main points that I wanted to illustrate regarding heavy oil and its its relevance 
uh, to us now and especially in the future as these oil reservoirs become increasingly important. Okay, in the next um, in the next section of this lecture, we'll talk about uh, some of the ways that you could potentially use microbial strategies to enhance oil recovery.